Hey guys, Mike Teaches Programming here and welcome to a new series all about OpenAPI and API first driven development. So about a month ago I put up a long enough video about 17 minutes, it gained a bit of traction but I don't think I touched on everything inside that video so what I wanted to do was create a simple bite sized video series that you could pick and choose which parts you want to watch. So part one is going to be um, today's video and what we're going to look at is the setup. So what would I do if I was to create an API first uh, project and what kind of, how would I structure uh, my project? Part two, then we're going to look at how to change the YAML file. Uh, we'll probably make a simple get request and just show you how we can change or manipulate the generated files that we output from Swagger Code Gen. Part three will be about post requests and kind of different responses we can do. And part four, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at path parameters. <clears throat> so let's get started. I don't want this video to be too long. So again, today we're going to look at the setup and how I would um, structure my uh, API first project. So what I'm going to do here is create a simple uh, Spring Boot project. I'm going to call it test project and click finish. So this is going to create just a single Maven module repo. Uh, with the source file here that it creates and it creates your uh, test project application here. So again, I'm going to kind of run through this. So what I would do is if I was creating an API first project, I would create two modules. One module to hold all of the business kind of code. So, um, you know, your, your, your controllers, everything, your services, and then one project or one module, sorry, for your API swagger code generation stuff. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to create a new module. Uh, it's just going to be a simple Maven uh, project. Um, I'm going to call it test project, project and service. And that's it. So the changes that made was it put it into here. So into the main palm, we have our test project service. And inside here, it just created us a blank source. So we can delete that source file within our module copy the source file from the main directory in there and now we have our service code in there what we need to do then is in the main palm take out our dependencies and our build oh sorry press cancel control x and paste them into the palm file of our service okay so now if we run a Maven clean install on that, it's going to run through the main palm and it's just going to run our test project service, um, <clears throat> which again has all of our business logic code. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new module. And this here is going to hold all of our API uh, YAML files and all of our generated sources. So we like to keep this separate just in case you need to version. It makes it easier if you wanted to um, take the dependency in from elsewhere. Um, so I would recommend doing it this way. You don't need to. You can run it in the same directory. It's really up to you. But for now, I'm going to create a new one, test project. And I always put it your project name and API or your project name service for the two modules. Click on finish. And we have our two <clears throat> modules. And in the main palm, we have our two modules building. OK, so next step is we need to define our, <clears throat> get our API module set up so we can run the Swagger code generation tool. So let's go into the palm file <clears throat> of our API module. See, it's pretty blank at the minute. So the first thing I'm going to add is the, if I can find it, the first thing I am going to add is the plugin to build the, the Swagger code generation plugin. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the, the plugin. Here it is right here. So I'm going to copy this. I will leave this in the description so you can just copy it. And you can see here, it's <clears throat> pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, the only thing you need to worry about is the few tags inside configuration. So we have input spec. This basically takes in your YAML file. So if it doesn't exist, it will complain whenever you run a Maven clean install. Where do you want the classes and files to be outputted? 
you can define it here. So we're going to run it in the generated sources. API package, so any any um, interfaces you define, this is where it will go, this directory. And any models, responses um, that you define, they will go into this package. Okay, so we don't have a library API file. So what I'm going to call it is test api.yaml. And then I'm going to create that test api.yaml right here. Test api.yaml. <coughs> Coughing a lot. So that's that. That's really all you need to do. I have a simple test api.yaml that I have. I'll leave this in the description to you. Just copy and paste it again. In our second video, we will look at this. So if you run a Maven clean install now, it will fail. And it will fail because when you go to generate, when Swagger goes to generate these models, it will complain that it, it doesn't have the right dependencies to actually create these, these classes. So what we're going to do is we are going to add these dependencies in. So again, I am going to leave this in the description. Um, what you can do is whenever you run Maven Clean Install, you can see where uh, all of these dependencies come into play. You know, some of them are self-explanatory, like Swagger, and then for Jackson annotations, you can have a look at your generated models and see what's generated. Okay, so a few dependencies there. Again, leave them in the description. And we have our API YAML defined here. So what do we need to do? We need to run uh, let's just build the project and then we can run a uh, maven clean install from the parent directory. So it's going to run our service and our API modules respectively. So what it's doing now is it's running the test for the project service that passed. Now it's onto the API um, YAML. And you can see here that the, all of the projects, all the, it built successfully. Okay, so if we just go here you can see a target folder is now there if we go to generated sources source main java and you can see now in our api we defined two paths com example api com example models so com example api and models we click into the library api we can see now that we have a library class and in our models book we have the book that we defined. So again, these are generated from oh, let's cancel that. From this YAML file. Again, don't worry about it. Just copy this in. I'll leave it in the description. In the next video, we'll go into detail and how we can change this to suit what we want. But this is just to show you and get set up. So now the next question is, how do we get this library API and how do we implement it into one of our controllers in our service module. Okay, so we have a service module right here. Okay, um, we have a controller. So let's call it REST controller. And we wanted to implement, imp implement, sorry, our library API, our library API class, but there's no dependency. We can't get it because this service doesn't have access to this library API. So what do we do? What we need to do is go into our main palm file and make a new tag and call it dependency management. And inside there is dependencies. And what we want to do is add a new dependency. So we need the group ID for that artifact and a version. So I'm just copied this in for um, artifact ID. Yeah, the group ID, artifact ID, sorry. Yeah, so I probably shouldn't have copied that in. Uh, what we need to do then underneath that tag is we need to make a new tag. So it's going to be dependency. And I don't know why it's put in this, but never mind. So dependency, it needs, uh, we need to define our API dependency, okay? So if we go to the palm file of the API, uh, you can see here that we have the artifact ID. So just copy, paste the artifact ID there. Um, the group ID and the version will be the same as the parent, unless you have changed it within your um, API 
palm file. So let's just go and we will take the version, which is this this guy. Come that example. Group ID actually. Uh, yeah, group ID, artifact ID, and the version. So the artifact ID points to our uh, palm file within the API module. Um, group ID and the version also defined there as well. So now if we save that, just click a, uh, that button over there. Now, once we go back into our test project service, and if we go to our REST controller, if we click into the library API, it will say add dependency on module test project API. So now if we do that, okay, what did that do? So if we have a look at the POM file on our service, what it did was it added a, a dependency taken from the parent, which takes the test project API. So basically we're saying, okay, parent, take the dependency of the test project API and our test project service module can then reference that, that dependency from within its own POM file. Okay. So now what we can do is we can add an import for that library API. So if we have a look where that library API is, as you can see, it just points to that library API. So now it's complaining because we need to add in our method, implement the method. And you can see here that we now have access to the get all books in library, which was generated or defined right here. Um, so get all books in library, um, the method that we have here, um, it's now inside our REST controller within our service class. So again, really, it's up to you how you want to do it. You can do a single module and just have a different directory for your uh, YAML file. What I like to do, though, is split it up into different Maven modules. I think it makes it much more easier. Um, again, just all you need to do is add in the dependency on the parent for the API module. And then in our service module, just bring in that dependency from the parent. So that's pretty much it. So what we've looked at today is how to set up the repo, how to set up two modules, the API and service, how to import our classes that we generate from our API towards our project service. And we have now seen that we can actually import the library API from within our REST controller. So in the next video, we're going to look at you know changing the API YAML file. So we're going to look and we're probably going to create different uh, different get requests. We're going to take out books and we're going to we're going to uh, change the different responses. Um, and then from there we can look at different post requests and more advanced stuff. But today I was just looking at the setup. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, stay around, subscribe like the video and in the next one hopefully we can get a bit more advanced so thanks for listening i'll see you next time